Good day. So today we are going to discuss our next topic, which is all about conic section, the ellipse. So on the first module, let's just uh, have a short recap. On our first module, we discuss about the introduction of conic section, particularly about the circle or the first conic section, which is about the circle. So uh, when we say circle, it is a uh, figure in which equidistant with the center so as you can see we have the general equation of a circle that is x or the quantity x minus h squared plus the quantity y minus k squared is equal to r squared so we have the h and k as our vertex and r as our radius so from the vertex it should be equidistant so we have equal distance from the center going to the different vertices or co-vertices um, inside or along this circle. Okay, so I think we can proceed now with our next topic that is about conic section ellipse. Okay, so when we say ellipse, let's just have, uh, have a short review. The geometric definition relies on cone and a plane intersecting it. So as you can see here in the figure, we can see a cone cut by a plane in which it is cut diagonally. So when when a plane cuts the cone diagonally, it forms a or an ellipse. So what is the definition algebraically of an ellipse? We can define ellipse algebraically as a set of points in the plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points called the foci remains constant. So we will discuss it further as we discuss or we try to graph the different um, equations of an ellipse. These are the parts of an ellipse. From each point in the plane, the sum of the distances to the foci is constant. So again, from the foci, the vertices around that ellipse is equidistant. It's having equidistant, the same. It is constant. It will not change. So let us now discuss the different parts of an ellipse. Let's start with the very important, the foci. So foci because we have two focus. So foci is the plural of focus. Napa? So we have F1 or the focus number 1 and F2 we have the focus number 2 so this is these are called foci. So foci we have here the point A. The point A is characterized by the distance 1 and distance 2 that is equal to C. So from the distance from the vertex we can compute or we can find the point A by adding the distance 1 and distance 2. So distance 1 that is the distance from the focus 1 to the point A and distance 2 that is from the focus number 2 going to for the point A. So we can find the C which is the foci or the focus. So that is the point A characterized by distance 1 and distance 2. We have also the point B. Point B almost the same with point A. The same one about we have the distance 1 plus distance 2 that is equal to C. Okay. okay that, that's it. Let's discuss it further. We have here items reference on the graph of an ellipse. So these are the very important parts and very important that you should be always remember. We have the center. Center, uh, the same with the circle, we have of the center, which is the H and K. The same with ellipse. The H and K also serves as the center of an ellipse. If we are going to make an example of a center, we can have the solar system. The solar system, we discuss it in science, in which center or in solar system, sun serves as the center. The earth and the other planets serves as the points around the center and it revolves to the sun simultaneously. So 
they did not change the distance or their distances are constant. So the same with ellipse. So we have they have also the elliptical orbit. So that is very important. So we can proceed now. So we have here the definitions of an ellipse. A while ago we, we defined it algebraically and we, de we define it as a set of points in the plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points to call the foci remains constant. So as I discussed our, a while ago, again, um, the distance from the foci is constant. It remains constant. So we have here questions that we can answer in our discussion, in our discussion. As we discuss further, we can answer this question. The first one is, what remains constant in your sketch? So we can answer that. What remains constant? Second one, the points where you place the tacks are known as the foci. So if we going if we are going to have an activity, if you are going to check your module, you have an activity in which I require you to have the string and the thumb tacks. And you need to rotate it to draw a um to draw an ellipse. So you need to locate the midpoint between F1 and F2. And the question is, is this the center of the ellipse? Will that always be the case? And the, th the fourth question, what inference can you draw from the data? And the last is, does the data support the definition? Why? Why or why not? Explain. So later, we will discuss all of those questions. So it is important to please pay attention so that later you can understand or really understand what ellipse is. So these are the different facts that you need to know about ellipse, ellipse equation. The first one is both variables are squared. So if we are going to recall from the circle, circle also has variables that are squared because x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's an equation of, an, of a circle. Well, when we discuss about equation of an ellipse, this is the equation of an ellipse. We have here the quantity x minus h squared over a squared plus the quantity y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So what is the difference between ellipse and cir uh, circle? Ellipse, we have this a and b as our denominator. And always, we set the right side of the equal sign as equal, one, equal to 1. Unlike with a uh, circle, in circle, we, what? We just, we have this what we call R or the radius. Because um, radius is very important also in circle. In ellipse, the important is the center and the A and B. A and B serves as the axis. It's either the major or minor axis depending on the given values. So what makes the ellipse different from the circle? So I already told you about the difference of circle and ellipse. Now ellipse has, I mean circle, it has same radius or from the center, all the distances are the same. While when we say ellipse, it, can, it has major and minor axis. So merong mahaba or the eccentricity is different. But what makes the ellipse different from a parabola? So we will discuss it also. So let us now proceed with the example or the general stand, I mean standard equation of an ellipse. The standard equation of an ellipse is the quantity x minus h squared over a squared plus the quantity y minus k squared over b squared is equal to zero where the center is at hk and the absolute value 2a is the length of the horizontal axis and the absolute value 2b is the length of the vertical axis. So why do we need to know this thing? Because our topic will revolve or will revolve yes to the equation and how do we graph an ellipse? But let us discuss first this 2a. 
to a and to b so as you can see we have here the absolute value so why do you think we have this absolute value is it because when we are dealing with length or distances it should always be positive so we can't have a negative value for a distance or length so since we are dealing with length it should be positive that's why we deal with absolute value so kindly remember um please always remember that now um, not only in ellipse but also in other subjects or maybe in other uh, concepts math or even not even in math maybe in science you deal with length that should always be positive so you cannot have a negative value for your distance or length so let's discuss the different procedures or steps methods to graph uh, since you need uh, you will graph also an ellipse the first one is put it in standard form just like what the above equation is x squared term plus y squared term that should be equal to 1 so we always set it we set the equation equals 1 that should be the first step that we do standard form set it equals to 1 second plot the center which is the h and k so h and k is important h and k is very important which is that signifies the center of your ellipse the same way the circle next plot the endpoints of the horizontal axis by moving a units left and right from the center so a units why a units that is from y left and right a left and right b up and down because a is under x so it means you will just move from left to right and b up and down because it is under the y axis so that is very important we will discuss it later as we go on with our discussion number four plot the endpoints of the vertical vertical atayo vertical axis by moving b units up and down from the center so that is up and down and kindly take note of this the step three and step number four locate the endpoints of the major and minor axis so with the use of a and b as our variable and it has a value on about my value po yan, um, we can find the endpoints of the major and minor axis depending on the given uh, number or values so we will discuss it later further number five we need to connect endpoint of axis with smooth curve so the same with center a uh, circle after we get the center and plot the radius from top, bottom, right, and left, we can connect it using a smooth curve. So that we can form, we can now draw, we can now graph a circle or especially we have an ellipse. Number six, use the following formula to help locate the foci. So again, foci is very important. Although um, in some cases, foci is not really required to put in a graph but um, for us it is a common practice that we do in graphing an ellipse so we have here two conditions that we need to consider the first one is if a is greater than b then we need to use c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared that is the formula to get the foci and if b is greater than a the formula is c squared is equal to b squared minus a squared so kindly take note of that um, we should always uh, know how to identify uh, those things if a is greater than or b is greater than because one wrong identification of values that would result to wrong answer also okay number six uh, this is the continuation we just move c units c is the foci po. c units left and right from the center if the major axis is horizontal so if the major axis is horizontal we will just move c units so for example our c is 5 is you and your center is 0 then you need to move from 0 you will move 5 units to the right and 5 units to the left so if it, it means that the value of x or h 
is 5 and negative 5. You will learn it later. Or move C units up and down from the center if the major axis is vertical. Vertical. Patayo. So it means you will move upward and downward. Next. Label the points F1 and F2 for the two foci. So for you to not, um, para hindi tayo malito, we can label, ano po? We can, lab we, can, we can always label, and that is really a requirement when we are graphing, we should label all of the points, all of the graph that we put in a Cartesian plane. Note, it is not necessary to plot the foci to graph the ellipse. So again, as I've said earlier, we ca it is not really necessary, but it is common practice to locate them. So as a practice, since you are now in senior high school, and later on, you will proceed um, to college. So college, maybe some of your teachers would require you to look for the foci, at least you have now the knowledge to do that. It is uh, an advantage for you. Next, number seven. Identify the length of the major and minor axis. So, how to identify the, the length of the major and minor? We have 2A and 2B for their length. Pa um, absolute value. So, let's now have the example number one. Example number one, we have graph. So we need to graph the quantity x minus x plus 2 squared over 25 plus the quantity y minus 3 squared over 16 is equal to 0. The first thing that we need to do is to put it in standard form. We need to set it equals to 1. So as you can see, as you observe with our equation, it is already in standard form. So we, we, we don't have any problem with number 1 because it's already done. Number two, we need to plot the center, the H and K. So here, if you are going, if you will return or recall the equation of the standard equation of an ellipse, you can see that two and three are our H and K. But in dealing with H and K, we should always get the opposite sign. So since two is positive we need to get negative 2 and 3 is negative we need to get positive 3 so our h and k here or the center is negative 2 3 so that is the coordinate or coordinates of the center number three plot the points of the horizontal axis by moving a units left and right from the center so here what is the value of a our value of a squared is 25. How can we get the value of a? If a squared is 25, how can we get the value of a? We just need to find its square root. What is the square root of 25? That is equal to 5. Therefore, our a is 5. So from that, we can now locate or plot the endpoints. You will just add and, mine and subtract 5 to the value of h. So our value of h, um, the center, is negative 2. So the first is we need to, let's say, we subtract first. Let's subtract. Negative 2 minus 5, like signs, it means we will add. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. So we have the first co uh, coordinate, negative 7, 3. The only thing that will change when we are dealing with a is the value of h. I'll always remember that. And the second one, negative 2 plus 5, that is unlike sign, so we need to subtract. 5 minus 2, that is 3. Therefore, we have 3, 3 as our second coordinate. So those are the endpoints at uh, endpoints of the horizontal axis, which is our major axis. Next, we need to plot the endpoints of the vertical axis by moving B units up and down from the center. Up and down. Because B, B is at y-axis. Therefore, our value of a, a B squared is 16. And we need to find B. How can we find B? We need to find the square root of 16. What do you think is the square root of 16? Very good, it's 4. So, 
4, we need to add 4 units. A while ago, we add 4 units with our h value, which is negative 2. Now, since we are in b and we are dealing with up and down, we need to add 4 with our value of k. So, that is 3. Add and subtract. So, first, let's add 3 plus 4 is 7. So, we have negative 2, 7. And the next is, let's subtract. 3 minus 4, that is negative 1. Therefore, we have negative 2, negative 1 is our um, coordinates. So we have negative 2, 7, and negative 2, negative 1 is our coordinates for the horizontal, or I mean ver vertical axis. Now, let's connect the endpoints of axis with a smooth curve. So using a graph, graphing paper, you can now graph it by just plotting the points. That's You can plot the points. After you plot the points, you connect them using a smooth curve. That makes us an ellipse. So if you plot it and connect it, you will arrive with this graph. So we have the major axis that is the color yellow. That is in, at the x-axis. We have the center, the violet, and the green one is our minor axis. So as you can see, major axis is longer than minor axis. And foci can be found at our major axis. Proceed. Number six. Why or which way is the major axis in this problem? Is it horizontal or vertical? It is horizontal. Why horizontal? Because 25 is part of our x. And x is, an is part of horizontal or hori is a horizontal axis. That's why it is horizontal because 25 is greater than 16 and 25 is under the x. So we use the following formula to help locate the foci. So, what do you think? Which do you think we are, is the formula that we are going to use? Is it the first one or the second one? Very good. That is the first one. Why? Because A is greater than B. And A is 5. B is equal to 4. So, we will use C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So, that would make a sense to find the foci. So, let's substitute. What is the value of C? Mayo pa. So that is C squared still. Then what is the value of A squared? We have 25 and the value of B squared is 16. Let's subtract. C squared is equal to 9. Square root. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of C squared is C. So we have positive and negative 9. So from the center, we can now locate the foci. But the question is, which variable or which var yes which number are we going to add is it from negative 2 or at 3 of course we will add at negative 2 because our major axis is at horizontal axis which is part of the x that's why we need to add at negative 2 add and subtract at negative 2 so the foci so move 3 units left and right from the center to locate the foci. So we have now the foci negative 5 and positive 1. So that is from adding 3 and subtracting 3 with our center, the value of h. Okay, so let's graph. So that would be the ellipse that we have. We have the two foci, uh, two focus that is equidistant from the center, that is 3 units from the center. So the length of the major axis now is 10 and the length of the minor axis is 8. So how, do we, how did we get that? That is the absolute value of 2a and absolute value of 2b. Let's now proceed with the second example. So the second example is an example in which this is not, this is not yet in standard form. So we need to convert it first. 
So to convert it, since we don't have any x or y, we have only x squared and y squared. We can just divide it by 144 directly. So divide all terms by 144. So that would give us the result of this. x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. So we need to plot the center. Okay, so we need to plot the center. That is, since our equation is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1, we don't have any value for h and k. So it means that our center is at 0, 0 or at our origin. So we need to plot the endpoints of the horizontal axis. So how can we find the endpoints? So we can just base on the given equation. We have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16. So which one is the horizontal? Of course that is 9 because that is under the x. So we need to find the square root first of 9. What is the square root of 9? That is 3. So therefore, we will add 3 to the value of h, which is 0. Add and subtract. So the first is 3, 0, and the other one is negative 3, 0. So those are the endpoints of the horizontal axis. How about the vertical? So we need to plot the endpoints also of the vertical axis. So the vertical is 16 because that is our major axis. So we have now in y axis at our major axis. So we need to plot the endpoint of the vertical. So what would what would it be? So we, since we have 16, that should be 4. 4 as our value of b. So we can add 4 to 0 and then subtract 4 to 0. So that would give us a result of 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. Number 5. We can now connect the endpoints of axis by smooth curve. So we plot first the points, the four points, our endpoints. Then we can now connect it using the smooth curve. Number six. Which way is the major axis in this problem? Now the question is which way? Is it vertical or horizontal? So as you can see, 16 is greater than 9. And 16 is our B. So it means that our major axis is vertical because 16 is greater than 9 and 16 is under the y axis so we need to locate now the foci how can we locate it by using the formula so what formula are we going to use since 16 is greater than 9 we can use the second formula a while ago that is c squared is equal to b squared minus a squared. So a while ago we used a squared minus b squared. Now we are going to use b squared minus a squared. So that is let's substitute 16 minus 9 that is 7. So 7 is not a perfect square. So therefore we can just write square root of 7. Positive or negative. So where are the foci? We will just add positive um, seven, square root of 7 or subtract square root of 7 at the given center. So we have here the foci, zero square root of seven and zero negative square root of seven. Now, we can now find the graph. We can now graph the equation and we can now find the length of the major axis and the minor axis. The length of the major axis is just two times b or 2 times 4 that is 8 and the minor is 2 times 3 that is equal to 6 so please remember those um, formula in finding the major or the length of major and minor axis of an ellipse so let's now proceed with example number 3 so here this is an example in which we need to solve first not just by dividing um, the given equation, all the terms by the constant term, but we need to use a method in quadratic formula, or I mean in quadratic equation, that is very important. So we will use the complete the square or completing the square. 
to return uh, to, to put it in standard form because that is our first method that we, did, we always need to so combining like terms we have 4x squared plus 16x plus 9y squared minus 54y is equal to negative 61 so why it become or why it becomes negative 61 because by the rule of addition proper to equality we subtract both sides negative 61 or mind we subtract both sides 61 that's why we have negative 61 for our value of the constant term or we sometimes we use the word transpose we just transpose it from the left side of the equal sign so that's why when we transposing one variable one number from the right side or left side of the equal sign it always changes its sign na po, nagbabago palagi yung sign if it is positive it will become negative and if it is negative it will become positive so here are the next or oh, here is the next step the next step is to factor out the coefficient of the x squared or y squared term that is 4 and 9 so as you observe with our third step we just factor out inilabas lang po ano inilabas yung 4 and 9 so therefore we can now proceed with our so that we can proceed now with our completing the square because we cannot complete the square unless we have a coefficient ano po? not one or more than one coefficient for the x squared or y squared it should always be one as our coefficient so why did it become why do you think that 16 becomes 4 or x because we just divide it by the factor out number so 16 divided by 4 that is 4x plus 9 times the quantity y, y squared minus 6y why do you think it becomes 6y because we divided 54y by 9 54y divided by 9 that is 6y and is equal is equal to negative 61 let's proceed so we have here the numbers that we add for x for y and for the constant term so as you can see we add 4 we add 9 we add 16 and we add 81 so where did um, those number uh, came from so in completing the square we always find the b the value of b so what is the value of b in x x variable we have 4 because 4x four, 4 is our value of b so the next step is to divide it by 2 so 4 divided by 2 that is 2 and we need to square it 4 divided by 2 is 2 squared is 4 that's why we add 4 how about in y term or y variable that is negative 6 so negative 6 divided by 2 that is negative 3 squared that is positive 9 because negative times negative is equal to positive but the question is how or why did we add 16 and 81 at the constant term what is the reason the reason is we have this what we call factored out number the 4 and the 9 so before we add before we add the number to the right side of the equation we should first multiply 4 and 9 with the factored out number the factored out number for x is 4 so we just multiply it 4 times 4 that is equal to 16 and for the 9 we just have 9 times 9 that is equal to 81 that's why we have 16 and 81 so after this we just simplify it simplifying we just factoring it out factoring it out we have here 4 times the quantity x minus or f plus 2 squared plus 9 times y minus 3 squared is equal to 36 so 36 is simplified from the right side term um, let's do it let's set it equal to 0 
So divide all by, divide all terms by 36. So we have here the quantity x plus 2 squared over 9 plus the quantity y minus 3 squared is e over 4 is equal to 1. So that would be our standard equation for the ellipse. So let's now plot the center. Again, always remember we get the opposite. So positive 2, that is negative 2. Negative 3, that is positive. So our center is negative 2, positive 3. But what are the endpoints of horizontal? Oh, the horizontal, what is under horizontal or x? We have 9. Therefore, when we find its square root, that is equal to 3. So we add and subtract 3 to the value of h. So negative 2 plus 3, that is positive 1. Negative true, negative true. Negative 2 minus 3, that is negative 5. So we have 2 equations, I mean coordinates, that is 1, 3, and negative 5, 3. Okay. Number 4, plot the endpoints for the vertical axis. So what is under y? We have 4. Square root of 4, that is 2. So we need to add 2 to the value of k. What is our k? k is 3. So therefore, we can add and subtract 2 to the value which is 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So the first is negative 2, 5. And the second one is 3 minus 2, that is 1. So it is negative 2, 1. So those are the endpoints of vertical axis. Number five, connect the endpoints of axis with smooth curve. So again, that is just by graphing. You can do that using a graphing paper or any other um, graphing material. Number six, which way is the major axis in this problem? The major axis in this problem is horizontal. Why horizontal? Because nine is greater than four. And 9 is under the x variable. So kind of remember that. So let's look at the foci. What is the formula? That should be c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. And let's substitute the values. So we have here c is equal to positive or negative square root of 5. Because 5 is not a perfect square. So that would be our final answer for the foci. So we just need to add positive square root of 5 or subtract negative square root of 5. So where are the foci? We'll just add and subtract. That is negative 2 plus or minus square root of 5, 3. So just separate it. So we have now the graph of the ellipse. The length of the major axis is 6 and the length of the minor axis is 4. So just put the different parts. Parts, label it because that is very necessary when we are graphing a or an ellipse. So we have here the challenge question. Um, given that you already understood what ellipse is and what a circle is. And also I think you discussed this already, this already in your previous years. And of course, grade 11, maybe college algebra or general mathematics. Given the following information, write the equation of the ellipse. Sketch and find the foci. We have the center is 4, negative 3. The major axis is vertical and the has length of 12. And the minor axis has a length of 8. So those are the given information. If you can solve it, you can send it to me. So that I can check it if you got the right answer. Number one, we have the review questions. How can you tell if the graph of an equation will be a line, parabola, circle, or an ellipse? It depends on the... Uh, yes, it depends on the equation. Line, parabola, circle, or an ellipse. You should know how to determine those. Number two, what's the standard form of an ellipse? Standard form of an ellipse, that is the quantity x minus h, squared over 2, I mean over a squared plus the quantity y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So do, that is the standard form of an ellipse. Number 3, 
what are the steps for graphing an ellipse so we discussed it already and we have how many we have seven steps important steps in graphing an ellipse and number four what's the standard form of a parabola the standard form of a parabola we will discuss it with uh, on our second or next discussion or next topic number five what's the standard form of a circle we have x minus we discussed it already ano po? x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared and number six how are the various equations similar and different so they have similarities and differences depending on maybe some variables ano po? Uh, like circle and ellipse circle has this what we call radius and ellipse we have the major and minor axis so they have differences but they also have this what we call similarities similarities in terms of their center h and k similarities in terms of finding the center and some of its points so that's all that's all our topic all about our topic i hope you learned something today and time check it is 12 30 a.m so i am recording this 12 30 a.m uh, if you have any question just message me on messenger or text me using my number so thank you and god bless